highly sensitive individuals have great capacity for feeling the energy in a room in an almost telepathic kind of way. There's also perceptions of things that are not necessarily in the realm of the mundane day-to-day -day reality, so that you might be having very lucid dreams, for example, or being able to know what another person is thinking intuitively. Perhaps you feel entities that are guarding over you or trying to attack you, things of that kind. This channel is Meditation Amsterdam. My name is Pablo. And in today's video, I want to extend an invitation if you are a highly sensitive individual to try and create as much distance as you can from narratives, practices, beliefs, and perhaps participating in circles that invite you to uh, live out a mystical narrative which can enhance what is very likely to be already a rather avoidant and ungrounded life. I want to start by emphasizing those two aspects to make a case for this. Very sensitive individuals tend to have more sensitivity to trauma and the ego boundaries also tend to be more weak or ill-formed. These circumstances result more often than not in a kind of fawn response, a type of introversion and a attitude that is avoidant and which puts us more in our mind rather than being in contact with sensory perception of the now and what the now calls for, what it requires, whatever it is that it needs to be perceptually faced in this moment. There's also a tendency to have a very active imagination because, as I have mentioned in previous videos, thinking is a way to disassociate from the now, which feels threatening, especially our own body. And that makes it so that we can apparently live entire lives in mental realities that have no or very tenuous bearing with our day-to-day -day life and is practical necessities. So looking at all this, I would suggest that if you are a highly sensitive individual and especially if you feel like you suffer from uh, trauma and you suffer from overthinking, anxiety and a avoidant or disassociative attitude towards getting your life in order, that sustaining and enacting mystical narratives is uh, very counterproductive, especially uh, at the start of your healing journey. It is counterproductive in the sense that it will only enhance the likelihood of you enacting your avoidance. It gives you a, a great excuse to hold beliefs of the kind that you may be, maybe an, uh, uh, adopt the, um, the uh, identity of an empath, some sort of broken healer or light worker. Um, it might um, invite you to justify not getting your primary areas of life together under the excuse that you are on some sort of higher spiritual mission. This is classic spiritual bypassing. Um, and so 
it, there's a, a huge danger of entering into more avoidant and more fantasy making patterns in your mind due to these mystical narratives. There is another price to be paid for this, which is that some of these narratives bring with them promises of making things better through believing certain things or doing certain practices that are completely ill-informed and not in line with everything that we know about psychology, neurology, embryology, developmental patterns of uh, our human system, known patterns about energetics and how to release trauma from tissues, things of this kind. So that I've made videos already in the past about getting together in circles to sing Kumbaya or contort in supposed Kundalini releasing type of patterns, beliefs in entities uh, of some kind or another, which you in fact may be seeing, but are simply visual representations of unresolved or um, moving energetics in your body, which is no different than a dream. A, dr a dream is nothing but a visual representation of your subconscious. And so if you are seeing things, you have to keep in mind that these entities that can be very clearly seen and perhaps even interacted with are not going to pay your rent or heal your trauma but they are simply a visual representation of somatic movements or psychosomatic and numinous movements that are taking place from very deep in your mind in your mind body system and to some this may come as a as an unwelcome message because uh, these narratives can bring a lot of false hope, they can give you an identity of sorts, make you feel special and prop you up and make you feel that even though you may be dysfunctional in, in one or several areas of your life, that you are somehow still uh, special and that there's something great uh, in, uh, in the future. Um, I just saw some sort of video saying that your future is golden. Well, I would say it's only golden if you do the bitter work of actually getting your life together and resolving your trauma in a well-informed and professional way. So, um, having said all of that, I will disclose that I love mysticism. I am, my heart is that of a mystic. I don't dislike these things. I love those experiences. I know how um, all-embracing and fascinating they can be and I am so keen on having them be a an ongoing part of my human experience and perhaps be even a permanent bridge between the numinous and the and the daily which is kind of what the shaman tries to be or the yogi tries to be but never ever ever at the expense of having your day-to-day -day life be wholesome and your state of mind be grounded in touch with what's up effective in the world and uh, as the gospel of thomas says you need to be as naive and simple as doves and as shrewd as serpents right so you need to be kind but firm effective in the world and these narratives especially at the beginning of your healing journey are going to be very very detrimental for that if your system is very solid and all your ducks are in a row you can start to dip your toe in those waters and experiment with them because your identity is not going to be sidetracked by them and there's a less uh, lower likelihood that you'll uh, end up in this magical thinking type of trap uh, and even then it should be taken with a pinch of salt uh, so for example in Zen they speak about that those all mental phenomena are considered to be utter garbage essentially complete poison should be ignored altogether and keep going straight to the goal which is a pure clean mind so um, that is today's uh, thought uh, since I've been uh, talking about techniques uh, for, for the sensitive individual. Uh, this to me, uh, the tendency for my magical thinking and disassociation is a classic uh, thing to tackle, especially with all the information and, and supposed gurus and mystics out there um, giving information today. So it is very important that we first focus on grounding 
reducing pain, being stable, being effective on the basics of our uh, human life before going into some sort of mystical tangent that is only going to uh, at best distract you and at worst give you a false identity and uh, plunge you further into disassociation and avoidance, which is the last thing that you need if you already show those kind of patterns in your life, which are typical of um, empathic personalities that uh, also tend to carry uh, a little bit more trauma or a lot more trauma than the average individual. I am very curious about your thoughts on this one. Do share them in the comment section. And as usual, if you believe that this is content that other people would benefit from, then your liking, sharing and subscribing helps the channel become more visible. It's also very motivating to me. I'll be back with more videos as usual. And until then, thanks for watching. Bye bye and have a great weekend.